Hi guys, happy Sunday. It's Claris and I uh, I'm just going to give you guys a few seconds to kind of trickle in as I also pull up my screen on my desktop so I can read any comments. So give me a quick second to do that. And here we are. Okay, now I can see everything live. Hi, Patty. Uh, okay, so let me just uh, quickly give you my ramblings before we begin. Um, and as you're coming in, feel free to say hi. Um, so this is what we had done this week. We did the extra loose um, flowers. And uh, last week, last Sunday, we kind of did something like this. So we're going to try something with the technique that we learned this past week. I know I said this week, but like this is a Sunday is a new week. So this last past week, uh, we did this technique, the loose and light technique. Now, because of the holiday colors, I know they're like red and browns and whatnot. So it's kind of like, let's see if we can get a soft look. I'm not quite sure. So I don't really have much of a plan outside of the fact that we're definitely going to be doing blooms today. So uh, it's going to be a learning curve for us all. So let's just see where this takes us because I honestly have no plan for today uh, outside of the fact that we're going to do something like this. And there's a candle involved, guys. So we're going to do a candle as well and uh, a couple of florals around it. And uh, here's a quick rough that I had done and then I did some cones which obviously we can do I think better but again like in, you can see it's like a lot darker right so yeah so let's see let's see what we do um, I'm using a smaller sheet today I'm probably gonna make it vertical since we're doing a candle but um, yeah okay so I'm just gonna quickly look at comments to say hey hi Cindy Painting Sunday. I love it. Hi, Gladys. Hi, Kathy. And Kathy again. Hey. Hey, Artie. Um, hey, Jill. You made it. Yay. Awesome. Okay. So, um, uh, let me tell you about my colors that I'm using. So, I think for the next couple of holiday floral themed videos that we do, I think my colors are going to be pretty pretty much the same and I'm going to tell you what they are so right now we have the so for the reds and for the florals and the berries and whatnot uh, I'm going to be using the Carmen and uh, a mixture I'm going to mix some of it with the violet so those are two uh, for I think for the greenery it's safe to say that I will be using the umber and the green from St. Petersburg. By the way, these are St. Petersburg for those who are joining me and you. Um, and then for like the cones and pines and whatnot, where the browns involved there, we're going to be using a mixture of Mars brown, raw sienna, and then for the darkest, we're going to be using, uh, I believe this is a sepia. So yes, yeah, so those are the three versions of browns. And then I also have this matter lake red which is like a cooler red on the side and uh, I might end up dipping into some of this too because when I mix these reds with the purple I get a different variation so um, depending on what we want I'm just going to keep it on the side and then for brushes because this loose one I don't know if anyone has checked out my stories on Instagram but I Put the time lapse for how I had done this flower on there and uh, I had used the um, to lay down the light color I had used the mop brush first so we're gonna definitely use the mop brush um, the mop brush the uh, number eight Princeton and then the uh, silver black velvet eight just to kind of have another handy one and then obviously this is the finest brush I have and we're going to need it, uh, which is the silver black velvet in the four. So, um, 
so yeah let's just see where this sort of goes um just want to read the comments really quickly before we begin if anyone is saying anything uh hi lise and yes jill you made it hi zanette uh yeah kathy we're gonna be doing the one with the candle today so get ready for that uh what else uh morgan uh, welcome morgan glad you made it uh downright daffy hi okay all right so let's begin and obviously guys please hit the like button so that i guess uh we can generate more excitement on this video and have more people join us as well and uh let's get started all right pamela is here hi pamela all right okay i have my water ready i have a brand new paper towel ready here somewhere where is it oh right here and uh let's begin i just want to make sure that you are able to see this and the lighting is good it's kind of dull here in our area so not the greatest all right so I'm gonna keep that on the side and we're gonna start off the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the bloom uh, we'll call it a peony if you wish or maybe some sort of rose because they're kind of big fluffy blooms and we're starting off with using just make sure I have enough space here. We're going to start off by using our mop brush. Just move all of that down. And I'm just getting some water on my brush. And then we're going to go with the first red that I had mentioned, which is the uh, Carmen. And I'm just getting a tad bit of color. And I want to try and keep it light. Like I had mentioned earlier, let's see how if we can accomplish that. So the consistency is more water, less color, so that we can get a nice light effect. And then once that is done, we can uh, use our number four to kind of go in and add more detail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, now that I have color on here, just be uh, careful because the mop brush holds a lot of water. So I'm just trying to get as much of it off. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the inner petals and just watch me before you guys do it so it makes more sense. Uh, so I'm just going to do a couple of strokes just like this where I'm just kind of dragging the color down to form little petals and I'm leaving white space in between them. Getting a little more color and doing the same thing here. And I'm trying to leave white space. So it's it's kind of like creating four little leaf petals or petals, uh, leaves or petals, uh, because it's the same shape, like it's an arc shape. And then you're kind of just doing a couple of extra strokes to the side. And then once you have that, you can take your number four and uh, getting some color directly from some darker color just using the tip directly from here we're just going to go and touch the bottom of these in fact you can even drag and create a little a couple of lines and that kind of makes the color surge into the um, petals we have put down and it's a nice effect uh, and then once we have that we're going to continue to use this and create a couple more petals around it have it kind of blending in nicely and now we're going to do the background petals and pretty much the same thing and we want to do it in the arc shape and leave a lot of white space in between so i'm doing this same repetition really pulling down the color leaving white space And then kind of just trailing off as you go to the sides. Okay, and then once we have that, I'm going back in with this brush and I'm doing the exact same thing that we did before. Just adding a couple of lines with this darker pink that we have.
and then I'm just gonna do a light variation like in the background almost on top of these and they're a lot tiner, tinier than what we've already laid down and then I'm just doing a couple of very easy light strokes to the side dipping the tip in water because I want a lighter pink for the side and then maybe just getting a tad bit more color and then I'm just like doing a couple of dots all around the top to kind of make it seem looser and then we're doing the same thing over here for this layer just a tad bit here and there and this gives us a nice variation of color now you can see this petal of mine is dried which is why it's not kind of blending in as well so I'm just gonna go in and add some water to kind of give it somewhat of a blendy look and uh, and yeah leave it at that and then finally we're just gonna do a couple of strands out here of the petal so literally taking the light color and just kind of adding a couple of strokes here and there on the on the bottom half and then leaving it just like that now as I've done this I've realized I've put this smack dab in the middle which doesn't leave us a lot of room for our candle but don't worry I have thought about it as I've been doing this and I've figured out a way that we can kind of go ahead and do the candle still. Um, we still need to add a couple of details into this floral then we can kind of go into the greenery for it. I'm just adding a couple of strokes in here getting the red or the pink whatever you want to call it and I'm just adding some strokes on the outside to kind of give it some variation and having it blending in with the light color that we have going so far. That's why you use the uh, number four because it just gives us a nice thin stroke and this helps us highlight these certain areas and petals that we might not necessarily want too much detail in but just a couple to kind of show where it starts and where it ends sort of deal. Just doing a couple of strokes here and there at the top as well. Kind of give it more oomph. There we go. And now once that's done, let's just do the center bit. I'm just smoothening out some of these strokes here. Just taking water and kind of smoothening out the color. There we go. I think that's good. And now we're going to use the four and I'm going to do the center and for the center we're going to use um, let's use let's use the brown. So I have the Mars brown here and I'm just going to use, so this is the lighter brown, the lightest brown of the three that I have. And using the number four, I'm just doing a couple of dots or strokes just in the white space area. And then just a thin line of strokes. like So it's almost like an oval shape. It doesn't have to connect. Uh, you can have some space in between the strokes or the dots that you're laying down it's totally fine giving it that center and then I'm going to go in wash off the color and get some of the darker brown that we have uh, and that is the so we had the Mars brown and I believe this is the medium brown raw sienna I believe so for this I'm just going to touch the bottom of the uh, Mars brown and this is so that we can have some blending from dark to light happening. And so just tiny, tiny dots or a tiny layer of color just to kind of give us a nice variation for the center. All right.
right there we go so we're good with that uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a couple of uh, pines now I wish this was still damp I highly doubt it is but uh, let's just continue and do what we're doing so I'm gonna be using the the same brown that we just used for the center so this is the raw sienna and I'm gonna do one stroke here and if your petals are damp that's fabulous go for it and I'm just gonna do extend another stroke here and then using the same brush I'm gonna get some of my umber so directly from here you can you no know, I have the palette handy let's just mix some color so getting some of the umber I'm just doing strokes like this from the outside in and I like the muted tones of this green it kind of goes with our lighter look uh, and now that I'm seeing it this way I'm not quite sure if I want to add the actual green but let's see I think it might be a nice blend so I'm just doing a couple of strokes I want to leave as much white space as I can and let's let's go for the green so I'm not washing anything off just getting some of the green and I'm gonna hit the area where it's still sort of damp and from the outside in obviously and mixing it this needs a little bit more water So as you can see, it's gotten a lot darker. So I would say if you like the darker look, go for it. If you're kind of liking the muted look, maybe just stick with the uh, umber. It's entirely your call. I'm gonna go ahead and work this in. Because like I said, I don't really have a plan per se. We're just kind of going with um, trying things and seeing what we get um, now that this is laid down I'm just gonna go ahead and darken the center the branch per se and it might give us a nice blend because the we've just done the little green on it so if it blends in nicely with the green that's amazing if not that's okay catch it another time so we have that, that's great. Let's do another one poking out over here. Or no, let's do one poking out here because we can keep this area for a candle, perhaps. And let's do one here this way, actually, before we move on to the next. And then using the umber that I have here, again, doing the same, it's too brown get some of my green just adding the same strokes that we did previously making sure you leave a lot of white space and then going in with the darker green and Just putting a couple of strokes on there on the inside. All right, so that's good. Uh, like I said, we're gonna do a couple of strokes over here on this end. So taking the brown, I'll just do some here. I need more water. And let's just do one more facing this way, yeah. 
And again, the same ritual that we've been doing so far on this end. So I started off with the umber. Let's just put the color here so it's easier for me to see as well. And we're doing from the inside out and just doing a couple of, this almost looks like a fish bone. And then again, taking the same color, we're gonna go and do it on this side. All right, and I kind of really like how this blend is happening, and this is a great uh, version of loose, I guess, pines, or no, not pines, it's not a pine cone, but like, yeah. Um, we're gonna go in with the darker green because we wanna keep it consistent, or I do at least, so I don't know what you've done if you have done the darker green or not, but. I'm doing some from the out in and then some from inside out. Just giving something that gives us a nice good blend. Leaving, trying to leave white space in between. And then give us that nice burst of color as well. All right, so that's done. We're gonna go ahead and do the center with a darker brown, just getting that medium brown that we have, which is the raw sienna. And because the stuff is still damp there, it's giving us a nice cool blend with the green. All right, and then now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some pine cones. And for the pine cones, we're gonna use we're gonna use uh, the number eight to get some of the color down. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting my medium brown and I'm just gonna get some color from here. Just mix it on here. Cause I want a very light variation of this brown. And let me just try and move this camera sideways because maybe this will be a better view. All right, and let's see. I think I want to do a pine cone over here. No, let's do it on this side. We'll leave this for the candle. Let's see how that candle ends up turning out. So we'll do one here and we'll probably do one over here on this end too. So should have used the larger sheet of paper or probably just planned for this floral a lot lower. Okay, so using my number eight, I'm just gonna create like a very loose shape uh, created with dabs uh, and it's going to be like the pine cone shape. So like tapered at the top and then wide at the bottom. And obviously make sure you don't have too much water on your on your brush and so this is how I'm doing it. I'm just literally doing tapered at the top and then kind of fading off as you go down into the floral. Trying to leave white space in between <clears throat> and I'm just kind of adding a couple of dots on the sides to it. Give it that loose look. All right, so we've got one there. And then I'm gonna do another one over here. And for that, I'm just gonna like turn this over. So getting some of that color. Again, we're doing the same shape and tapered at the top or bottom for this area, I guess. And then I'm just kind of loosely creating that pine cone shape. And, oops, got some water color in my hand. 
All right, so loosely creating a pine cone shape by just dabbing color. And then just adding a couple of dots, spots here and there. Making sure you leave a lot of white space in between too. And then we'll wait for it to dry a little bit before we kind of go ahead and do more. Uh, so I think this one we can kind of tackle it right now. So for that we're going to take the number four now and getting the darkest color that we have which is I believe sepia. So remember this is still a little bit damp and we're just going to kind of go ahead and create little strokes and I'm going to show you how. So for the top we're just doing, okay just make sure you have a nice potent amount of color on here. And I'm just doing strokes like this like comma strokes but tiny and you want to do it from the outside in if you feel like there's too much water and it's giving you too much of a flare just take your paper towel and dab so you get a slightly more contained um, flare of color so I'm just doing this motion throughout like going down slowly and getting more color and then we're gonna do another layer of this once it's dried up better Oh, I put my hand on this one. Sucks. It's the thing what this is what happens when you're kind of focusing on one thing and then you're just taken away with it. All right, let's do this side. Thankfully, I didn't spread it all over the place, but yeah. Make sure. All right. So, same thing here. We're doing like starting at the top small and then just kind of doing our little comma strokes and it gives us a nice flare and you kind of want that because uh, this is a loose style of painting and we're not we're not doing it like spot on exactly like how they look but when you look at it, you're supposed to be able to kind of tell right away that is a cone. So if you have achieved that, you have succeeded. So don't stress if it doesn't look exactly like it. And we're just, this might take a couple of tries for some to get. It's all about that water consistency and making sure you kind of get a nice enough blend nothing too much so uh, I think initially if you've not done something like this it might be <clears throat> might take you a couple of tries but do not give up I'm just kind of fluffing around here with this I'm gonna leave it at that and let it dry for now and I think two are okay for what we have the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of berries and so for the berries we're just going to do uh, the combination of these two so like the purple and this pink or red rather and I got some red on there already so I'm just going to put some purple in there with it and then get some more of that and it's quite it's a nice jewel tone at this point. Uh, just gonna get a tad more of the violet. I'm calling it purple, but it's the violet. And I just want a slight variation so when we put it down, it doesn't quite look too close to what we have here. Um, now it looks too violet, so okay. 
I think this is perfect. So using this, I am going to create a couple of berries and I want them to be very close to each other. So for instance, uh, I think it might be easier for some of you to kind of uh, do the stem first and this way you kind of have an idea of where it's going. Uh, for the stem, I'm going to use the darkest brown, so let's do that. I'll do this version first and then you can do um, the next one kind of freehand. So I'm going to do a stem this way. Oh, is this not dark? Oh, see that's too thick. But we're going to work it. And make it work somehow. So just giving it a stem. And then once I have that, going in with this brush and we're going to create these little berries. Now I want them to be tiny, but I also want them to have like white space, like a dot of white space in there. And I want them to be close in proximity. <clears throat> so you can have variation of sizes, the largest being something like that. And then kind of just hugging the branch that we have created. So also making sure you leave that white space. Now you can have a variation of the berries by just dipping um, your brush in water and then kind of painting light berries around the area. Just like so. And tinier versions. There you go. I think it's like a nice pretty offset. So there's one. We'll do the next one down this way here. And let's try and get this nice thin stroke happening first. So let's do one here. And then the same motion that we've been doing. So uh, focusing on making sure that the um, sizing of the berries is smaller so that the eye has a good hierarchy when you're kind of looking at the picture as a whole, uh, that these are just kind of embellishments around the actual main elements, which is the big bloom and the, um, the candle that is to come. And so, yeah, just kind of try and fill the area uh, as best as you can, leaving some areas to breathe, I guess, so that you're not over, overly filling the berry area. Yep, something like that is fine. And then we can go ahead and create some, some leaves to go with it. And so for that, I'm going to use a combination of the umber, which is right here. And then I will mix in a tad amount of the green. And I have something like that, which is good enough. Feel free to use any color that you feel works. I'm trying to use the same colors so we have some harmony happening. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and create a couple of leaves surrounding these areas first. So like having a line right there and then just kind of having small leaves happening. 
just like that. Now we've done this several times, which is why I'm not over explaining myself here. But uh, just make sure that for the actual stem in between, you go back in with a darker color um, of the green and just kind of highlight it. And this way it gives you that nice, it doesn't look as flat, the leaves I mean. So something like that, and then we'll have a couple of them peeking out in other areas too. So for instance, we can have some on this end here. I'm just getting some water to kind of get another variation of the leaf because we're doing this as a light rendition, <clears throat> loose rendition. And then we'll do a couple over here. But I don't want the height of this leaf to go higher than that, so I'm just going to keep it as close to the floral as I can. And then taking some of that dark, darker green, just add it to certain areas there we go leave it that way I think uh, we can leave this like as so for now let's do the candle and then we can kind of touch up with more leaves around the place so for the candle I'm going to use my uh, you can use any one of the eights really. Let's use, I'm going to use my silver black velvet eight and I am going to also use which brown? I am going to use the lightest brown that we have, which is right here. Uh, and I want a very, very muted color off this. Um, actually I changed my mind. Sorry. I'm going to use the raw sienna instead and i just want a light swab feel free to use any of the browns we're just trying to achieve something that's very beige looking and brown no not brown like a like a yellowish look i guess pretty much like what we did here so getting so getting some of that color, again, there's a lot of water, very little color on my brush. And now I'm going to go ahead and free draw or free paint, freehand paint this uh, candle in there. And now because we don't have a lot of space, this candle needs to be very stunted. <laughs> so let's begin. So I'm doing it sideways, as you can see. So I want to create uh, two lines to kind of guide me so I know exactly what I'm filling in. So I'm doing a line here and then I'll do another line over here and then I'm just going to paint this in and just fluff it around the floral. And I don't know if you can see it very clearly because it's very light but I'm just pulling down the color and leaving a lot of white space between the color and the actual candle and just kind of roughly doing a zigzag kind of motion with my brush right there okay and then I'm gonna get just the tip of my brush I'm gonna dip into the brown that we've used and I'm just going to add a line here so it gives us a nice flare of like a darker color and I just want that lighting that light and shadow effect to be there and then we're gonna create like this oval shape happening over here and we're gonna leave the the center of the oval white so we're not painting anything in there let me move this so here we go all right 
So here's the oval. Here's the dip. And just getting to add more color. And a thin line at the top to represent the other side of the oval, okay? And it doesn't have to connect all around, like I'm leaving that white space there. And there we go, we have that. I'm just gonna make sure that the candle is symmetrical enough. And fill in some color here and there. Um, and then go back in for that darker brown. So you can very clearly tell. So again, going in for that darker brown and giving this side more of a shadow. And then just kind of dragging that color on the upper end of our little oval shape pushing all the color down on this side. All right, there we go. So this is a freehand candle that we have going on. And then finally, we're gonna take our um, number four right here. And I am going to actually, with just water on it, I'm just gonna take borrow a little bit of color from here and kind of swish it around in the middle. I don't want too much though. I want most of it to still be white, but just a little bit, just like that. And then I'll leave that to dry. Then we just go in, paint the wick, and you can either have a flame on it or kind of leave it as is. But let's go back and tackle these guys, and then we're almost done. So for these guys, we're using the same, or uh, we're gonna use the, this is the sepia, yes. And I'm using the sepia and getting the color directly from it. And then we're gonna go back into these areas and recreate the same motion or the uh, shape that we previously did to get this effect. So we're just overlapping it. So just kind of going ahead, doing a couple of strokes. And you might not even wanna have them uh, all over the place. It's amazing how much you can get done with a couple of comma strokes or C strokes or whatever you wanna call them, I call them that or how many things you can create using these strokes, really. And it's so simple. And just kind of continue doing that. And we are almost done. And I'm just kind of doing a couple of dots here and there in this area to kind of make it look very loose and flowy. So there we go. There's that one cone and we got to do this one, yes. Let's do this one here. Oops, move it around. And again, the same motion. almost there and 
And I think this is good. There we go. Okay, so we have this much done. Uh, now we just go back into the center, get our little wick happening, which I think we can use the same color for. And I think it's fairly dry, so we're just going to do the wick over here. There we go. That's pretty enough. That was easy. And then for the actual flame, um, we can either use one of the browns that we have or I will introduce these, uh, the yellow ochre. If we just take some of that and it should be fairly easy to do. Uh, and we're just kind of adding like, again, another leaf stroke or like a petal. And I'm touching some of the wick so that the brown kind of seeps into it and gives us like a variation in our color. And I'm leaving white space in between. And there we go. We have our lit candle. So you can leave yours unlit if you don't want to light it, but uh, this is what I did here. And then, um, and then yes, lastly, I said you can add a couple of more green leaves and such like that. Like it's entirely up to you. I think this area could use some. Um, so I'm just going to add a couple and then we can call it a day. I think this turned out quite well enough. Uh, as soon as I'm done this, I'm going to read your comments and so let me know what you guys are thinking, how uh, this has, I guess, was it easy? Did you like the pine cones? I want to hear your comments. So I'm just going to do a couple of green leaves here and then let's, uh, let's recap. So using my number four, just creating some direction here with where I want this leaf to be. And then I'm doing another one right here. And I didn't leave a lot of white space in here. I should have. I'll do one over here. So one two and then three dipping my brush in water to kind of get a lighter green happening right here just like that and I'm just gonna taper the edge the tip of this leaf and then just add a lighter one here and there we go I think this is good enough don't like this leaf but you know what uh, such is life you're not gonna like everything you do I guess so what I can do is kind of go in with that darker green or the umber and just just darken it a bit so it gives it more definition so that's not too bad and just makes it I guess stand out more compared to the other ones yeah so this is not bad all right yeah so i think this is it this is what i wanted to show you guys and now i'm going to read the comments let's just see uh what everyone is saying if you guys like this okay uh reading comments reading comments let me go back um Lillian says it was very hard to see. I know it's kind of really dark here, but I'm looking at the screen and it's not too bad. So sorry, Lillian. Uh, I didn't really have any lighting ready for this. Um, hi, Ginger. Hey, Chris. I hope you finally learned <laughs> to paint the peony. You, you guys are funny. Uh, hey, Patty. Uh, the pine cone is a lot of fun to paint. I added too much water. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. Um, it kind of gets, it takes some getting used to because while it is simple, you just need that right consistency of water for it. Um, hi Art by Tammy or hi Tammy. Hi Deanna. 
Glad you liked it, Cindy. Uh, thanks, Gladys. I'm going down now, reading more comments. Yes, Patty, so did I. I kind of smeared some of this, but thankfully it didn't go all over the place. Uh, hi, Jerry. You're welcome. Um, yes, so I, I think the general consensus is people like the pine cones, but they're kind of finding it hard to do. But like I said, watch the video again if you must, or just kind of use the technique. It's actually really simple. You just need to... Uh, get that water to color ratio correct. Uh, Lillian, uh, poinsettia with a candle. Yes, I will be doing poinsettias next week. So check out the video first, which I will be posting next week. And then Sunday we'll regroup and incorporate the poinsettia into something nice. Since I've done a candle already, let's see, maybe I'll do something else. But you can feel free to learn the poinsettia or do it with us and then add the candle. Um, this is what I want you guys to do, like pick variations of florals or elements that we've done and kind of mix and match, create your own. Um, thanks, Shazia. Glad you guys like this. I kind of like how it turned out too. I, like I said, I wanted it to be a lot lighter, just like what we did uh, last week for the tutorial that I posted, the loose roses, but clearly it wasn't, I mean, it's kind of hard to have a Christmassy scene and keep it light especially when you've got browns and whatnot and it started raining over here on on my end i don't know if you can hear it but um okay great okay so i think everyone has pretty much said everything they need to oh kathy had a question my umber looks black did you maybe use mars brown on the pine cones no so kathy a mar umber is at least for me, from what I've seen, it's like a, it's like a greenish brown. Um, have I have I not been? Did I not get this right? Because I'm pretty sure the umber is a green brown. Um, but yeah, that's what I had used for it. I feel like I really like that greenish brown and the green together. So they kind of work really well for these elements. Um, Send your rain to San Diego. Yes, Patty, all your plants definitely need watering too, I bet. Can you send the heat here? Because I miss it. Um, oh, Shazia, I'm using Canson watercolor paper, which is not 100% cotton, but yeah. Trouble with placement when I'm making my own. Is there a rule of thumb for that? Uh, Cindy, yes, so uh, just to touch very briefly on placement and elements. Remember when I was talking about the the berries being a certain size and whatnot and these leaves not going past the berries. So what helps is you place your main elements first and then everything uh, everything that kind of enhances the look of the main element kind of go around it after. And it helps when certain elements are taller, it creates a nice shape. Um, so for instance, this I wanted it to be taller. Like you can see, I didn't have these leaves coming beyond the berries because I just wanted certain elements because otherwise you can just keep adding stuff. And then like if I added leaves beyond this pine cone, it wouldn't quite look as nice. I don't know how to explain it to you, but um, maybe try, try using what I have just commented on uh, like using as in like um, taking that rule of thumb into action when you're composing and see if that makes a difference in your compositions. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy difficult. You could just have one flower, two elements, a couple of leaves, and then like see how you feel. Like start off small before you kind of venture into bigger items. Uh, let me see if anyone has any other questions. Um, yeah, Patty, I'm very jealous of your 85 degrees. <laughs> um, Leanna, thanks. Thanks, Lena. I, I don't know why Leanna came to mind first. Um, yeah, Cindy, do what I said and then let me know how that goes or send me pictures, guys. I love seeing your pictures.